we call on the white church in Boston to join us in supporting a black rep reparations movement. <laughs> we panhandling, y'all. <laughs> We panhandling out this motherfucker. We call on the white church in Boston to join us in supporting a black rep reparations movement. Standing in solidarity, clergy leaders from across the city of Boston gathered for an interfaith multiracial meeting at the Resurrection Lutheran Church in Roxbury, Nubian Square. They're here to ask the religious community to atone for black Boston suffering and support... <laughs> for black Boston suffering in Roxbury, Nubian Square they're here to ask the religious community to atone for black Boston suffering and support black reparations and we are coming as Dr. King said to get our check organizers from the <laughs> yo man That backlash is going to be a motherfucker, right? That backlash is going to be a motherfucker, man. That backlash is going to be a motherfucker, you heard? Y'all, y'all annoying as shit. Y'all more annoying than a nagging bitch. Press one. Black people are more annoying than a nagging bitch. Black people more annoying than a nagging bitch. We call on the white church in Boston to join us in supporting a black rep reparations movement. Standing in solidarity, clergy leaders from across the city of Boston gathered for an interfaith multiracial meeting at the Resurrection Lutheran Church in Roxbury, Nubian Square. They're here to ask the religious community to atone for black Boston suffering and support black reparations and we are coming as dr king said to get our check organizers from the boston people's reparation commission say they're also following up on their demand on the city of boston for a 15 billion dollar initial payout to begin the process towards repair and reconciliation to the city's black community five billion dollars as initial payment around cash payouts five billion dollars around uh, strengthening our financial institutions, creating a new black bank, uh, $5 billion in terms of uh, addressing issues of uh, the education achievement gap between blacks and whites. Yeah, but the education achievement gap, I don't care if you give $5 trillion, you can't do nothing about that. Press one. <laughs> they can give you niggas $5 trillion, man, a gazillion, a billion dollars. Fulfillion, the dragillion, a million, Sicilian dollars. And y'all, and that you can't do nothing about the achievement gap. <laughs> he said Massachusetts was never a slave state, neither was California. And they doing this shit too. Funny how none of the slave states, Florida, Florida, one of the biggest slave states said, fuck y'all niggas, man. <laughs> but Massachusetts and California, who never had slaves, is like, yeah, let's do this shit. How much money you want, brother? A process towards repair and reconciliation to the city's black community. $5 billion 
as initial payment around cash payouts, $5 billion around uh, strengthening our financial institutions, creating a new black bank, uh, $5 billion in terms of uh, addressing. <laughs> he doesn't understand the world. <laughs> Something wrong with his mind. He doesn't understand the way the world works, man. He doesn't understand how the world works, man. Something wrong with his man. These Negroes are crazy. Repair and reconciliation to the city's black community. $5 billion as initial payment around cash payouts, $5 billion around uh, strengthening our financial institutions, creating a new black bank, uh, $5 billion in terms of uh, addressing issues of uh, the education achievement gap between blacks and whites. In 2022, the Boston City Council and Mayor Michelle Wu offered an official apology for the city's involvement in the transatlantic slave trade. She also launched two task force research teams to study Boston's role in slavery and its long impact on descendants. So we still suffer from the trauma of those instances and even today. Nah, you, you, you suffer from looking like a basset hound, nigga. This did look like a goddamn basset hound, man. That's why you suffering. Fuck are you talking about, nigga? Pack on descendants. So we still suffer from the trauma of those instances, and even today, uh, dealing with racism. On Saturday, this group called on the white church in Boston to support the black community for its association in slavery. Today, we call upon this city, its financiers, and its white churches to stop the shirking Stop the lying, tell the truth, and pay what is our <laughs> Yo, what the fuck are these? This can't be real, man. Y'all gonna give black people money and uh, 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 y'all gonna give black people a gazillion for billion dollars and they all gonna be broke in um five years. They ain't gonna do nothing but buy buy things and shit. Black folk ain't just ain't gonna do nothing but go and buy stuff. <laughs> That's all we gonna do is go buy stuff. and kill each other. The, the murder rate going to go through the roof. You give black folk that much money, murder rate going to go through the roof. You want see you think it's bad now? give black folk a bunch of money the murder rate gonna go through the roof black community for its association in slavery. Today, we call upon this city, its financiers, and its white churches to stop the shirking, stop the lying, tell the truth, and pay what is owed. Organizers say the next step is to engage in conversation with white church leadership directly. <laughs> Minorities owe reparations to white families for destroying cities we built. <laughs> the 
Uh oh, another sister, y'all. Another soul sister, man. Go ahead, soul sister. think they are the blueprint of the beauty center to the rest of the world let's just stop there i'm gonna stop you right there home girl skillet biscuit there the black americans think they are the blueprint of the beauty center to the rest of the world let's just stop there i'm gonna stop you right there home girl skillet biscuit <laughs> black americans let me tell you something about us i've seen every single type of person from every culture indulge in black and what black americans build mm-hmm Yeah. When people coming over here for the, these African countries and they got their music and they trying to share the Caribbean, they trying to share their music. You want to know who got to like the music first? Black Americans. We the reason the music can even cross the border. Who you think like that music first? Who you think putting them on in America first? And they crying to get over here. Because once they know they, once, they know once they go mainstream here, then they really up, right? So let's not act like Black Americans have not built things from the ground up. We have an entire culture let's make that clear the way we wear our hair even a way a, a black woman would do her edges on a wig let's be clear the styles that these black women the jada way to affect because jada way who she didn't influence everybody i just see so many every race culture and from every place in the world and talk about some jada way who was she a black american woman I'll be who the fuck is jada way to man i don't know jada way to man i guess i'm a tether man I'm a tether, man. I don't know Jada Wade, man. I'm a tether. Yeah, I'm a tether, man. I don't know who Jada Wade is, man. Oh, that's um the baby, little little baby, baby mama. That's Jade away there's little babies, baby mom. A Beyonce. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. A SZA, Black American woman who have influenced so. So Jade Awaiter, Beyonce, and SZA. A baby mama, a musical icon. And her RB chick. Everybody, I just see so many, every race, culture, and from every place in the world, and talk about some Jada Waiter. Who is she? A black American woman? A Beyonce? Let's be clear. Let's be clear. A SZA? black american women who have influenced so many people let's get serious so yes when these artists come over here to america they want to market them to black americans first because we like them they know they're gonna do good <laughs> and y'all think it's an insult because she says she's colored she says she's not black so yes when i see tyler speaking in in the same circles as black women and she herself says i am colored that's what she claiming which is a beautiful thing i don't say there's anything wrong with that I'm just saying, well, if that's the case, then when there's a black woman award or there's something like that, well, let's just make sure that the black women in the room get the award. Okay. Some road of mine. A 
Oh, good. All right, man, let's get the show stuff. Oh, okay, let's see this shit. Let's see what this black woman talking about. Today, Black Women's Day, man. Today, National Black Women's Day, man. Mm, make sure you support the channel, man. Make sure you support the channel, guys. Make sure you support the channel, guys. Make sure you support the channel, guys. Last night's stream got taken down by YouTube, man. I guess they I guess we went in too hard, man. <laughs> yeah, last that's why you guys didn't see last night's stream. They removed it. Let's see what's going on here. Over the past couple years, more Americans have become familiar with the story of the Tulsa race massacre, where a white mob burned a vibrant black community to the ground, which is crazy. Lies. All fucking lies. And you know it, you fucking whore. You, you fucking whore bag. You know you're telling lies. You lying fucking sun turdis. Over the past couple years, more Americans have become familiar with the story of the Tulsa race massacre, where a white mob burned a vibrant black community to the ground, which is crazy. Even crazier, dozens of other black towns have been erased off the American map, not by burning them down, but by hiding them underwater. This is Lake Lanier. It's a lake in Forsyth County, Georgia, where people go swimming and boating and fishing and do a bunch of other lakey things. But before it was Lake Lanier, it was a town called Oscarville, Georgia. Now, Oscarville was a thriving, predominantly black community with a church, a school, and dozens of homes until the year 1912 when a very bad thing happened. Oh, two very bad things. In 1912, two black teenagers were accused of rape. They were tried. Who think they did it, man? Press one if you think they did it, man. <laughs> Press one if you think they did it, man. Shout out to Mr. Clockwork, man. He said, just being honest, when the sun woman starts lecturing, every glider man rolls his eyes and tries to think of something else. Yes, it's that bad. Yeah, man. Shit. You gotta listen to these fucking sisters, man. They stupid nonsense, man. Who think these Sunters did it, man? Press one if you think these Sunters did it. Press two if you think they're innocent. Underwater. This is Lake Lanier. It's a lake in Forsyth County, Georgia, where people go swimming and boating and fishing and do a bunch of other lakey things. But before it was Lake Lanier, it was a town called Oscarville, Georgia. Now, Oscarville was a thriving, predominantly black community with a church, a school, and dozens of homes until the year 1912 when a very bad thing happened. Oh, two very bad things. In 1912, two black teenagers were accused of rape. They were tried, convicted, and sentenced to death in a single day. And after they were executed, a mob of white men terrorized, drove out, or killed all the black people in the surrounding area. And they did that until the entire black community of Oscarville disappeared. The county went from having over 1,000 black residents in 1912 to zero in 1920. That story is so sad, it makes this story look like a comedy. After the black community had been run off, the white people of Forsyth County said, you know what we could use? 
a big old lake. So they made one right where the town of Oscarville had just been. They flooded the area and literally covered up the entire town with water. This is what it looks like right now. But the town is still under there. The homes and churches and schools, they're still down there. And now people go boating on top of them. Compared to that, this is truly a rom-com. Now, you might be thinking, what a weird isolated incident. But just like the rat who ate the pizza in the subway, this story is both crazy and common. Ever heard of Collegia, Alabama? It was once a thriving black community with a black college, the first black railroad, and literally hundreds of family homes. Today, it's Lake Martin. At least they had the decency to name it after a black person. And if you think this kind of thing only happened in the South, let me introduce you to a place called Central Park. It's named after that coffee shop on Friends. Central Park used to have a black community in it called York Hill. But the city of New York destroyed York Hill so that they could build the Central Park Reservoir. Because if there's one thing New York needs, it's another place for ducks to hang out. But if you come here, don't try and feed those ducks. They are very aggressive. Mess around and lose a finger. Now, when the residents of York Hill were kicked out of their homes, they fled to another black community nearby called Seneca Village. And then a few years later, New York destroyed Seneca Village too so that they could build Central Park on top of it. The craziest part of this story is that I work a few blocks away from a place where the government disappeared two black communities. And until recently, I didn't know about any of it. You know why? Because it worked. They tried to erase black communities and they came way too close. But now there are people doing the research. So we are finally learning about places like Henry and McKee Islands, which is now located under Lake Guntersville in Alabama and Vanport, Oregon, which is now located under Delta Park. And all of these towns, which are currently literally underwater. Hey, wait, hold on. What was that last one? Old Neversink. That's a real place. Well, if we've learned one thing today, it's never assume something is unsinkable. This woman has her own show. God, Lee, man. Um, Black history be like 66 trillion years ago, the tribe of Shabazz was the only surviving tribe of 13 that resided on Earth after a rogue scientist blew up the planet, splitting off the moon, migrating to Egypt briefly. They would then settle in the Islamic holy city of Mecca, developing a technologically advanced society. But a group of citizens led by Shabazz himself traveled to empty Central Africa to harden their group and develop features. The tribe is said to have reached its peak in the year 4084 BC, but Shabazz would not be the most famous member of the tribe. That honor goes to Yakub, the creator of the white race. Born in Mecca, Yakub was born with an extremely large head, which gave him unmatched intelligence, discovering the law of attraction from playing with magnets. He theorized he could create new people who could attract others with lies and deceit to rule over the original black man. Exhausting the knowledge of Meccan universities at age 18, Jakub discovered that a black man had a separate black and brown germ. With 59,999 followers, he went to the Isle of Pelan, 
modern-day Patmos, establishing a dictatorial regime in which black traits were bred out through a eugenics program, in which blacker-skinned babies were killed, but lighter-skinned babies were allowed to live. After 200 years, he would create the brown race. Yakub would die at the age of 150 years old, but his followers continued his work, eventually creating the red and yellow races, until after 600 years, the white race was born. The brutal conditions made this race evil by nature, born with an innate desire to lie and murder black people. The white race would travel to Mecca, where they would wreak havoc and mayhem on the population. They were exiled to Europe, where Meccan soldiers would patrol the border to prevent the devils from crossing. The whites would further degenerate into barbarism, living naked and eating raw meat. A man named Moses would teach them to wear clothes and try to civilize them. When he gave up, he blew up 300 of the worst white people with dynamite. The whites, however, had by this point learned technology, using trick and lack of empathy to usurp power and enslave the black race, bringing the first slaves to America. Some whites realized they were evil and tried to go back to being black, but with nothing to go by, they instead became gorillas. Yakub's progeny would usher in a period of violence and misery. The white race, starting in 1914, would rule for 6,000 years until the original black people regained world dominance, while white people would commit many atrocities. None would be more famous than the Finno-Korean hyperwar an event well documented on the master of frofulness channel you can watch by clicking the link in the pinned comment yeah everything revolves around black people man the sign still flashes open above the front door 